Welcome back to Rose Education. This is that. Today I'm going to be talking about TTNP, Titan Pharmaceuticals and Corporations. I'm going to go briefly through technical analysis and then I'm going to dive through anything you find about the stock, whether it's uh, things as, as presentations, SEC filings, etc. So let's jump right into it. Now, on an MACD one week perspective, we get to see it's actually curving up, attempting a positive reversal. So that's amazing. Still not confirmed, even though uh, we've seen this massive jump. Now, on an ADX perspective, what we get to see here is a very strong trend. Only percent R sets a neutral and momentum is recovering a little. Moving averages do look bearish on a one week perspective, though. Now, on a one day perspective, what we get to see here is that an MACD here is attempting or actually confirmed positive and looks really nice. Uh, ADX shows in a strong uh, trend. Only percent R puts this one at overbought and momentum that looks to be positive uh, for first time since uh, quite a while I believe all the way back in 28th of October on a massive run but this is a really healthy run as we can see moving averages do look as well bearish on a one day perspective so that's a little bit dangerous here uh, we can take a look onto a one hour perspective we still look it looks to be really bullish on there with uh, a chance of a pullback at the ADX being uh, around 55 22. Now, when we're looking at a moving average band, just for the sake of the argument, the top is at 14 cent, middle 13, and the bottom 11. Um, and so it looks like volumes have been the highest for quite a while, uh, with the exception of the 28th of October. Unbalanced volume looks really bullish, but that can be a little bit dangerous if it doesn't hold the same amount of volume or similar volume on to the next day. I'm very sorry if I sound funny, by the way, I kind of cut my tongue. Um, so that's a long story, but uh, hopefully it'll recover soon. <laughs> now, on a stochastic fast and a stochastic slow, what we get to see here is that the price point looks like it might have another leg, but it looks like to be a bit dangerous at this level. Now, I can go on and do a Fibonacci retracement, but there's no point on it ever since the 245, and that was a split that happened last year in January. Currently, we're trading at... The low uh, teens. So what we're going to be doing here is uh, price line resistance and support. Current resistance sits at 17 cents. Above there, we're looking at 19 cents and 20 cents above there. 21. Then it goes on to 23, and from 23 to 26, from 26 all the way up to 29. Current supports. I would say a significant support sits at the 14 cent mark. Below there for 13 cents and below there all the way down to 11 cents. Now let's jump right into anything we can find about this company and uh, a little bit going on towards their uh, website. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed to see that there's no updated presentation at this point. Um, but moving on, I pulled up almost all the SEC filings I could find. Starting with uh, Titan Pharmaceuticals and Endogenes enter into a uh, Probavine co-promotion partnership. So that was a while, a while ago. Um, if we go back to where the date on this one is, uh, we're looking back all the way in June 23rd. I'm going all the way back. Um, offerings seems to be a lot of uh, what this one is all about, but they received uh, a minimum stockholder equity requirements um, and they had until August 31st to reach that. I believe they already covered the stockholder equity part. Moving on. Um, offerings followed by offerings um, and that seems to be something that is very uh, obvious with this one here that's how they raise money the company also announced its negotiation with El Maltini and C Elite Societa um, Maltini and Horizon Credit LLC the holders of the title outstanding debt around 4 million principal amount approximately 1.2 million in payoff amounts to eliminate such obligations company is seeking to settle the debt for cash payments Transfer certain probofine assets to Maltini and termination of company's right for future payments under the asset purchases and supply agreement with Maltini. Into the exchange, uh, into the exchange for release to Titan off the remaining collateral. Uh, and so there has been a lot of offerings to pay off debt. So I guess that is kind of positive. A uh, bit more uh, onto the shares. I'm not saying these are new offerings, by the way. These are a little bit ancient. Uh, they did have originally. A meeting scheduled to November 16th for a 1 for 15 or a 1 for 30 reverse split. Uh, I'll go back to uh, it in a second because that's been as well pushed back. 
But before then, uh, they already settled that debt, as I did mention. And so that's all in the back rear view mirror. So amazing. Uh, a bit more offering news. I'm going all the way back from July. All right. Offering. Um, and then we're going on towards TTNP today announced that it has entered into a definitive purchase agreement with JT Pharmaceuticals, a, pip uh, a peptide drug development company to acquire JT Pharma's Kappa Opioid Agonist Peptide. JT09 for the use of combinations with Titans Pro Neuro long term continuing drug delivery technology and treatment for chronic uh, process. So that's kind of um, a positive news for us. JT09 for the six months or longer. We're looking forward to conducting additional preclinical studies to establish proof of concept with that available in the first half of 2021. Offering again. And basically, yeah, a bit more details on the reverse split. Another offering, um, so there's that. I'm just basically trying to show you all the way from July to November to give you a sense of, hey, how do they operate? And you can get to see a lot of offerings is a part of what they do. Uh, the meeting has been moved from November 16th to November 30, um, basically to give more time for brokers, firms, and banks, uh, banks to exercise discretion to vote your shares on reverse split. So there's that. Now comes towards their 10 cube cash and cash equivalent. You're looking at eight. Uh, this is in thousands, so eight million uh, versus four five hundred and twenty-two uh, million. So there's that. Assets has decreased from December 31st to March 1st, but you know what we're gonna do is March, June, and September. Okay. So March looking total assets of 13.2. June decreased to 9.7. Uh, September decreased to eight. Okay, doesn't look good so far. Total stockholder equity 3.26, 13.26 million, uh, 9.76 million, and 8 million. Not uh, looking good. Okay, revenues. Move down to revenues. Second. Right, there we go. March revenue, total revenue 1.3 million. June 1.3, okay. And we're looking at number same. Last from operations on September 4.7, June 4.3, and March 4.3. Okay, almost all equivalent. Net loss and comprehensive loss 5.6 million, 4.6 million, 5 million. Okay, so very much on a stable kind of level where there's no much improvement, but the assets are decreasing. So that's kind of what we can get out of it. Uh, next coming in towards uh, their pipeline. So this is their last presentation. You get to see it's kind of outdated compared to their pipeline on their website. You got probobuffin opioid addiction, uh, preclinical phase one, phase two, phase three in the market. It's already out. Then you got two in preclinical, uh, one preclinical, one in phase one. Um, so there's PRs to come in later on. Perhaps I believe it was the first half of 2021 for Next, institutional buyers. Um, a little bit interesting because um, we get to see Jane Street, for instance, kind of ducked, uh, or sorry, they ducked down their entire position. Sabi, uh, a known short seller as well. And, you know, Sappy, people don't really like swimming in Sappy's water. And Sabi is around 5, 5 million shares in. Uh, it looks a bit mixed. Looks like uh, it's more of cautious investment, I would say. Or So that's the kind of the trend from institutional buyers. Moving on to insider buys, nothing for the last two years. All right, what's the play, Ed? So honestly, this one here is a little bit rough to say. I mean, if we look into the extended market here, for instance, that's a little bit rough as well. I wouldn't hold overnight for this one because, hey, a reverse split can be seen on November 30. I would only scalp this one. So that's a trend for me. It's only scalping. I'm a little bit scared to hold this one, and uh, that's kind of my feelings. So. A little bit of an interesting stock. Uh, I think perhaps a reverse split is possible. And I don't hold for reverse split, but I think it might still see a further push. And if it does, stop. You don't want that risk of it falling back down. That's what I think about this one. What do you think about this one? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like. Have a wonderful day.